Even on the rainiest of days, the small, sleepy ports that lie on the Calabrian coast retain their charm. But a few weeks ago, the Coast Guard and a few researchers had a terrible shock, which came from the bottom of the sea. A shipwreck, discovered 500 metres below the surface, rusting, covered in algae and lying on its side. A submersive robot, equipped with cameras, was sent down to explore the wreck. The cameras showed large cargo barrels, whose appearance suggested that they functioned as special containers for the transport of radioactive substances. A former Mafia boss, who is now cooperating with the authorities, made a statement that back in 1992, he sank a ship called Kunski, 20 kilometers off the coast of Cotraro. This ship contained 120 barrels of toxic waste. I personally managed the operation and placed explosives used to sink the ship. And what was the ship's load? It was loaded with barrels of radioactive sludge and other toxic wastes. One can assume that on the bottom of the sea, off the coast of Calabria, there lie 30 other sunken ships. And this sort of disposal continues to this day, as the demand is very high. Over the past 20 years, there have been a remarkable number of mysterious shipwrecks reported. Many different kinds of freighter have sunk again and again, with no trace of their crews remaining. In 1990, the case of the Jolly Rosso was particularly suspicious. The ship was chartered by the Italian government to bring toxic waste back from Lebanon, waste that had originally been transported there illegally by Italian companies. The Jolly Rosso initially disappeared without a trace, only to reappear again later on, capsized and washed by the tide back to the coast. Official records state that the Rosso's cargo hold was found empty, However, eyewitnesses report that there was a great deal of toxic waste around the wreck. At Amantia, near the coast, environmental activists lead us to an old illegal rubbish dump. Here, they say, the toxic waste of the Rosso may have been buried. Mercury, tallium and other heavy metals were found here. A proper container made of cement and containing toxic waste was buried here. The authorities launched an investigation into whether the unusually high numbers of tumours and other diseases in this area are related to suspected illegal dumping here. In addition, measurements taken showed that the temperature in this area is about 8 degrees above average. They also revealed clear traces of cesium-137 at the back of the quarry. Cesium-137 and other toxic radiation were also found in the river Olivia, which flows into the sea here. Silvio Greco is a marine biologist and on the National Council for the Environment for the region of Calabria. He has ordered a further inquiry into the possible health risks and calls for the immediate salvage of the toxic ship. Fortunately, we on the land are shielded from the ship's hazardous cargo by a kind of natural barrier of water. Also, we have been reassured by the fact that the footage filmed by the robot showed no radioactive traces on the wreck. But the barrels will not be preserved in their current state forever. The vessel must therefore be salvaged urgently, regardless of the precise nature of the charge. Criminal toxic waste disposal by Italian traders was also uncovered in Africa. In countries including Nigeria, Lebanon and Sierra Leone, thousands of tonnes of toxic waste was discovered. The Calabrian Mafia, the Drangheta, apparently has strong ties in Somalia. These pictures are from a TV reporter from the Italian RAI. It was on an Italian ship with traces of toxic waste and weapons on board. In 2005, 
Eloria Alpi and a cameraman were found shot dead in their car. Investigators on the case suggest that probably they had seen too much. A year later, there was another mysterious death. A naval officer, Natal de Grazia, who was carrying out investigations into dubiously sunken vessels, died of a heart attack despite being healthy. As part of his investigations, he was tracking a businessman called Giorgio Camoria. During a house search, the officer found numerous navigation documents, each marked with the handwritten note, ship lost. He also found in Camoria's records a copy of the death certificate of the reporter shot dead, Ilaria Alpi. Giorgio Camoria himself has disappeared. Camoria has been contacted about a highly risky project. Rockets were to be filled with radioactive waste and fired into the bottom of the sea to ensure that the rockets were deeply embedded. Originally developed by Euratom technicians, the patent was offered to Camoria, but so far it has had no takers. Austria had also been offered the rockets, says Nuccio Brilla, from the Environmental Association Le Gambient. With this company ODM, Camoria had also laid the groundwork for a toxic waste disposal link with Austria. It has become clear that Austria is one of the countries involved in the illegal trafficking of radioactive waste. Evidence can be found in the accounts which were seized from ODM and also in the reports from the inquiry that was commissioned by the Italian Parliament, which states that ODM had branches in several countries including Austria. che aveva una base in Italia, aveva ramificazioni in diversi paesi, compresa There is even evidence that one of the facilitators of these transactions is a high-ranking Austrian politician who is said to have arranged relevant meetings. austriaco che promosse una riunione apposita per risolvere questo problema e rispondere a questa offerta. The public prosecutor's office in the small Calabrian town of Paola, has carried out intensive investigations over many years of toxic waste disposal ships in the Mediterranean. Antonella Lowry has been employed for six years in the judge pool. When we asked her whether they have come across any connections with Austria in their investigation, she says evasively. Look, at this precise moment in time, we can only make public statements about our findings regarding the events leading up to the discovery of the sunken ship off the coast of Catraro. With regards to the origin of the alleged toxic waste, we can only comment when these barrels, which are in all probability still there, have been recovered. Only when the nature of these materials has been identified can anything be said about their origins. At present, measures are being taken to salvage the found shipwreck and many other sunken freighters are soon to be examined. Only then would it be possible to determine with any clarity whether there actually exists a link between Austria and the toxic waste business. A former contact of Giorgio Camorius denies any Austrian involvement with the business. I met Mr. Camorius completely by chance. I didn't do anything other than helping him contact someone in Bratislava, a doctor, I think. He said, you have good contacts in Eastern Europe. Can you help me contact him? And I said, yes, I know him. I gave him the contact and then I have no idea what happened afterwards. I never had any arrangements with him, never received money or anything like that. Actually, I don't even know what Camorio of business really was. Hold on, I do remember now. There was this one instance. I handled a paraffin cargo for him. I specialise in chemicals and food shipping. I did that, that's true. But I thought it was destined for Renato, who owned a very large candle factory. Renato from Milan, that's the name of the guy who brought me together with Camorias. Fortified towers from varying eras are reminiscent of the foreign enemies and threats of the past. Today the Calabrians feel themselves to be under threat 
from unseen enemies. One avoids local fruit and vegetables in case they are poisonous. Fishermen are unemployed because of the suspected contamination. The fear is spreading. It's true. I buy frozen fish because I'm afraid. Usually I always bought the anchovies because I like them so much. Hopefully all this will pass. Yes, I am afraid of buying fish. Now I buy the frozen fish, but who knows where it comes from. There is nothing in the sea. There have been no poisoned fish, nor any deformed fish. I fish here all the time, and I have not noticed anything. In the villages along the coast, even here, in the affected Serradiello, life carries on as usual. And when the fishmonger arrives in the marketplace with his fresh catch of the day, he urges you to buy from him. Today all he has is sardines. But nevertheless, a poster in the bar advertises an open meeting. The room is too small for the large crowd in attendance. The citizens' calls are for help from the government in Rome. All the ships should be found and salvaged, and all those responsible should be punished, they demand. The toxic waste business has established an international holding company. Many nation states are involved in this holding company, intelligence agencies and unscrupulous traders from around the world. Organised crime in Drangheta has begun to monopolise the provision of service in this business. It does the dirty work for much higher powers. And then the appeal to his fellow citizens. You mustn't turn a blind eye any longer. Please come forward with any information that you have. Break the silence. The Dringhetta poisons Calabrians and we must choose which side we are on. We will sink the Dringhetta.